Welcome back to Security Onion Essentials. In our previous session, installation part one, we downloaded the Security Onion ISO, verified it, created a virtual machine according to the minimum specs that we needed, and then actually ran through the first phase of the install, which was installing the operating system, CentOS 7. In this session, installation part two, we're now going to log back into that virtual machine, run through the Security Onion setup, let the install happen, reboot, and then log in a final time and make sure all these Security Onion services came up and installed correctly. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm starting off at the console of the virtual machine that we uh, set up in the previous session. I'm gonna log in with the username and password that I created. And you'll see that right off the bat, the Security Onion setup uh, starts up for us automatically. Uh, this is just the welcome screen, uh, talks a little bit about uh, Security Onion, as well as gives us some information on how to actually navigate uh, through the setup. We can use the arrow keys to move back and forth. You can use the space bar to select items and enter to proceed to the next screen. So I'm gonna press enter on yes to continue. The next choice is uh, do we want to run the standard Security Onion installation or do we want to just configure the network? And again, depending on your use case, uh, just configuring the network would maybe what you're looking to do. For us, we're gonna use the install option. This will allow us to actually uh, configure the network as part of the installation process. Next up is to choose our installation type. Now, uh, as we've discussed previously, Security Onion can be uh, deployed in a variety of modes. Uh, the first one is eval or evaluation mode, and this is the one that we're going to do in just a second. Next, we have standalone. Uh, this is where you have all of the different components of Security Onion installed on a single system. All right, and that would be usable for production in a smaller uh, type setting. Next, we have distributed. Uh, this is where we take all of those components of Security Onion and actually install them on different systems. And those are what we call nodes and those make up your Security Onion grid. All right, and those would be when you're looking at a larger network uh, than what standalone could handle. We also have our import node. This is a standalone install type that is uh, specifically for importing PCAP or log files. And then finally, other we have other uh, various install types under the submenu. But right now, we're just gonna do the eval mode. We'll select that. Security Onion uses a number of Elastic uh, applications, including Elasticsearch and Kibana and Logstash and a few others. And starting with Elastic Stack version 711, the Elastic Stack binaries um, are only available under the Elastic license, which you can read about um, under securityonion.net slash elastic dash license. You can also review that Elastic license using um, that URL that you see on the screen there. And so the Elastic license is something that uh, you'll have to agree to to uh, continue installing Security Onion. Uh, the Elastic license is a free and open license. All right, so we're going to agree to that. And next up, the question is, how should this manager be installed, whether it's a standard or air gap? Um, the standard is the default, and this is uh, the scenario where the manager does have internet access, and uh, that is the case in, uh, in our setting. So I'll, se I'll select uh, standard and enter the host name, not the fully qualified domain name, just the host name that we want to set. I'll set that to so-eval. Now select your management NIC. We have two network interface cards um, that are part of the virtual machine. Again, we set that up in the previous session. I'm going to select ENS33 as our management NIC. And it's going to ask us to set up uh, either DHCP or set a static IP. Now, it's highly, highly recommended that you use a static 
uh, IP when you are running through this setup. You can certainly use DHCP, but that comes with its own set of problems uh, if and when um, DHCP gives you a new IP address or something like that happens. So if at all possible, use a static uh, IP address. So I'm going to say uh, 192.168.80.45, and the subnet is going to be slash 24. Now again, to be clear, the settings that I'm putting in right now are not what you should be uh, putting in necessarily for your environment. This could change depending on what type of network and the configuration of your local network. Okay, so make sure you make sure you look that up and and are aware of what that uh, what that is. The um, let's see the gateways IP v4 address is going to be one nine two dot one six eight dot eighty dot five. Um, DNS settings, I'm going to separate it by commas. I'm going to leave the defaults. These are two DNS servers run by Google. Um, and so I'm going to leave that uh, as a default. I'm going to leave the DNS search domain as the default as well. And setup is now going to initialize networking. So it's going to go ahead and set up those, uh, those IP addresses and things like that. All right, so just a second ago, we told setup that we had internet access for the system. We had the option between standard or air gap. We selected standard. Now setup is asking us um, if we need to use a proxy to access the internet. Um, and again, in my environment, I'm just directly connecting to the internet and no proxy needed. So I'm gonna select direct. Uh, just checking, uh, Security Onion is now just checking uh, that all required packages are installed and ready to go. And now we're being asked to set up our monitor interface. Remember, this is the interface that we would connect up to a tap or a span, and that's how we're going to be monitoring traffic. All right, so I'm going to select with the space bar, ENS34, and then press Enter to continue. And now we have to choose our operating system patch schedule. So we can set a schedule to tell Security Onion uh, when it should be updating the operating system packages. To be clear, this is not the update needed, the updating needed for Security Onion related tools like the Elasticstack and Zeek and things like that. All right. So again, I'm going to leave the default of automatic where updates are installed every eight hours if they are available. Next, we have uh, enter your home network, separating CIDR blocks with a comma. Um, again, this is a variable used by Sericata. I'm going to leave that as a default. And now Security Onion setup is reminding us that the more services we enable, the more RAM that is required. And it's saying that because we have the option now to enable or disable certain components to be installed. I'm going to enable all of the components to be installed, Grafana, OSquery, uh, or Fleet, uh, Wazoo, the Hive, Playbook, and Strelka, and select OK. Do we want to keep the default Docker IP range? If you are unsure, please accept the default option of yes. So uh, again, uh, in my setting, there's, there's really no need to change this. I'm going to select yes. All right, next up is please enter an email address to create an administrator account for the web interface. This will also be used for Elasticsearch, Gabbana, The Hive, Cortex, and Fleet. I'm going to enter in my email, analyst at acmeonions.com. To be clear, uh, this email address that you enter will not receive email from this Security Onion instance uh, by default. It's not used in that way. It's only used as a username for the components that we have listed here. Now we'll need to use a password. So I'll enter in a password. All right, now we have to select how we're going to access the web interface. Um, this trips some people up, so let's make sure we walk through this one. All right, you can access the web interface when you go to Security Onion, either through the IP address um, of the system or through the host name. And remember, I set my host name to SO-eval. If I'm going to use a host name, I need to make sure that the system that I'm accessing uh, Security Onion from uh, can resolve that host name. So if I am accessing my, um, you know, I'm opening up 
my web browser on a Windows system and I'm typing in SO-eval into the browser, I need to make sure that uh, SO-eval re, uh, resolves to the IP address. And that can be done through either DNS or your Etsy host file on your local system. So just be aware that if you select hostname, that needs to be set. All right. Now in this case, I'm going to select hostname. I'm going to make sure that resolves locally. So I'll select that and press enter to continue to the next screen. Would you like to configure NTP or network time protocol servers? Um, uh, I'll, I'll just say yes, you can see this. Um, if you have local NTP servers that you want to use, you can put them here. I'm going to leave the defaults. Do you want to run SO-allow to allow access to the web tools? Yes. So what's happening here is that uh, when you install Security Onion, uh, by default, we lock down access to the system uh, so that uh, if you want to access web interface, you have to allow it through the firewall. And that's what we're doing right here. We're going to say um, 192.168.80.0 24. So uh, I'm going to say that anybody in the 80 subnet can access uh, the web interface for Security Onion. However, they still have to have a valid username and password to actually log in. And again, the 192.168.80.0 24 is my specific local network. Make sure you customize that for your local network. Finally, we have a summary of all of the options we've selected. Verify that everything looks good. You'll notice that there are some, um, some configuration options here that we didn't actually select ourselves, like the metadata tool, Zeek, IDS rule set, ET open. Those are defaults uh, for, an eval, um, uh, for an eval installation, and uh, we aren't able to change those, okay? So I'm going to now select yes, and it's going to run through um, the installation. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, so I'm going to pause uh, the recording, go grab another cup of hot coffee, and uh, we'll take a look once, uh, once it has finished. All right. And the installation has finished. Uh, it's going to ask us to uh, press enter to reboot. So I'll get, go ahead and do that. If there had been errors during the installation, we would have seen uh, an error message there uh, with a, uh, some information about how to look at logs to see and really dig into that error in, uh, in more depth. I would say that if you run into errors, um, don't just continue to use um, Security Onion and uh, you know think that it should work as it is. Definitely make sure you dig into uh, the logs and post on our discussions if you can't figure it out. And we'll see uh, if, if any of the community um, and others are able to figure out what's going on. All right, so I'm going to log in. Um, let's make this a little bigger here. Now, a uh, couple things to note. Uh, when you first log in, you'll see it says you can access the Security Onion web interface at and uh, whatever the host name or IP that you had selected. Uh, for this install is so-eval. You'll also notice one other message here. It says the following nodes in your Security Onion grid may need to be restarted due to packaged updates and it lists so-eval. That's just saying that um, there may be systems in your security ending grid that need to be patched and rebooted. Now we did just um, reboot the system and it had been patched as part of the setup process. So uh, this, this message should go away uh, in the next 15 minutes. All right. Next time we log in, you know, 15 minutes from now. Now uh, let me clear the screen and one of the first things you want to do after coming back from a reboot or a uh, installation is run so status. So we'll say sudo so dash status. And this is just going to check to make sure that um, everything has come back online. Now you see that we do have um, some greens, some of the components say OK, but you also have some starting up messages. That just means that Security Onion isn't fully started up yet, and we need to give it a couple more minutes. 
I'm going to clear the screen here again and um, pause the video for about two more minutes and come back, rerun SO status, and we should be green across the board at that point. All right, it's just been another couple minutes, so let's try that again, sudo so-status. Uh, let's actually pipe that into less-r and make it a little bit easier to see here at the, at the very top specifically. All right, so we see uh, checking Docker status is okay and all the other container statuses, um, everything looks green. So it looks like we're good to go. Came back from the, uh, the reboot successfully and it looks like we have a eval installation uh, successfully up and ready to go. So that's it for this session. In our next session, we're actually going to replay some traffic and take a look at a few of the analyst tools. Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you soon.